On the new PSAT writing, as you've seen so far, it's not just about grammar rules, though certainly that's a big chunk of the questions, but it's also about how you can improve the essay that you're reading as a piece of writing. What sentences can you add? What sentences can you delete? What's an effective transition sentence? What's an effective concluding sentence? What is information you could add to the essay to improve it? Right? These are all questions that aren't really about grammar. They're about the effectiveness of the essay as a piece of writing. So now we're going to go into a bunch of question types that deal with this type of thing. And the first type we're going to look at is questions where you have to add and delete sentences. So here, as you're going to see in these questions, they're going to give us a sentence that we have to add at a certain point, and we have to determine, is it a good thing to add it? And if yes or if no, why? So let's take a look at number six. At this point, the writer is considering adding the following sentence. Even 15-minute power naps improve alertness, creativity, and concentration. Should the writer make this addition here? Well, let's see. Let's see where we are. Such a proposition may seem counterintuitive, but in fact, allowing employees to nap could save companies hours of lost productivity. Studies reveal that napping improves memory and boosts wakefulness for the remainder of the day. Even 15-minute power naps improve alertness, creativity, and concentration. Napping can also have a positive effect on mood and overall job satisfaction. Dot, dot, dot. Now, we're talking about napping here and the benefits of napping and why companies might want to allow their employees to nap. And this sentence just gives us more information about you know, even a short nap can have good benefits. And we're talking about overall in this paragraph the benefits to the workers and overall to the benefits to the company. So this seems to make sense. So notice what's important here is the consistency within the paragraph. You want to make sure that when you're adding a sentence that it makes sense within the topic of the paragraph as a whole, that it's not extraneous. So we're going to get rid of C and D because we want to add this. Now let's say yes, because it demonstrates that the benefits of napping can be gained without sacrificing large amounts of work time. Yeah, it seems reasonable. They do mention and emphasize that it's only a 15-minute nap. Yes, because it explains the methodology of the studies mentioned in the previous sentence. There's no methodology. Even though there are studies mentioned in the previous sentence, this has nothing to do with the methodology or how those studies were completed. So we're going to go with A. Let's check out 18. At this point, the writer is adding the sentence. Prolonged exposure to ne neonic continoids has been shown to increase bees' vulnerability to disease and parasitic mites. Well, let's see if we should add this. Studies have offered several possible reasons that bees are vanishing. One reason that is often cited is the use of pesticides called neonicontinoids, which are absorbed by plants and linger much longer than do topical pesticides. Prolonged exposure to neocontinoids has been shown to increase bees' vulnerability to disease and parasitic mites. Chemicals such as herbicides and fungicides may also play a role. Okay, so do we want to add the sentence here? Well, notice we're talking in this paragraph about neocontinoids, and we're talking about how they're used as pesticides and they linger in plants very long. And this sentence builds off of the previous sentence, and in some sense the topic of the paragraph, by telling us exactly how these neocontinoids might hurt bees. So this one, whereas in the previous choice, the focus was on how it was consistent with the paragraph. Here, not only is it consistent with a paragraph, but it's consistent with the surrounding lines. So in other words, there's a smooth progression or smooth flow from one line to the next, where this is a logical follow-up to the previous sentence, which introduces neocontinoids, tells us that they hang around in plants, and now this tells us what the problem might be with how they affect bees. So we're going to add this sentence. We'll get rid of the nose. Yes, because it provides support for the claim made in the previous sentence. Yes, because it introduces a new idea that will become important later in the passage. Well, it's not introducing a new idea. Now, is it providing support for the claim made in the previous sentence? Well, yeah, they're talking about how neocontinoids might hurt. But bees, and then this little sentence tells us how they might do that. So we'll go with choice A. In the previous two questions, we were adding sentences. Here, we want to know if we should delete a sentence or delete, in this case, at least part of a sentence. And the same rules apply. You have to make sure that if you're deleting it, that you're not deleting important information. And that if you're deleting it, it's something either redundant or unnecessary, inconsistent with the paragraph or with the sentences around it. So let's check out if we should delete this. The In 1990, Chef Louis Savmari, a voracious collector of cookbooks, 
donated approximately 20,000 culinary artifacts to the University of Iowa Library. The gift included more than 100 recipe, 100 manuscript recipe books, collections of recipes handwritten by the people who used them. So this little dashed off portion seems to me to be a definition. It tells us what a recipe book is. Now, maybe we can infer what a recipe book is, that it's a book that contains recipes, but this tells us that they're handwritten by the people who use them, that's a collection of recipes in these books. So do we really want to get rid of this? To me, this seems actually kind of essential to the paragraph, essential to knowing what a recipe book is and why it's important. So no, we're not going to want to delete these, delete this line. No, because the underlying portion defines a term that is important to the passage, exactly, defines what a recipe book is. No, because the underlying portion gives an example of a particular culinary artifact. I wouldn't say it's an example. It's more defining what these recipe books are. So we're going to go with choice C. To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com enroll. And you can find the link in the description below the video.